When people think of dinosaur battles, they usually picture T-Rex throwing down with something like Spinosaurus or Giganotosaurus, thanks to a certain Hollywood movie that got a lot wrong. Truth is, those guys never even met. They lived millions of years apart on different continents in totally separate worlds. But there was one dinosaur that actually shared the same land, the same time, and maybe even the same hunting grounds as T-Rex. And here's the wild part. It wasn't another meat eater. It was a horned, thick-skulled, low-to-the-ground herbivore built like a tank. The only dinosaur ever found that might have killed the king. Let's rewind the clock back to the late 1800s. Paleontologists were still figuring out what dinosaurs even were. Exist. They lived from about 100 to 66 million years ago. So when they dug up two big curved horns in Colorado in 1887, they weren't thinking of a prehistoric lizard beast. They thought they had found the remains of some kind of ancient buffalo. A really strange buffalo, apparently. These horns were sent to Othniel Charles Marsh, one of the most well-known dinosaur guys at the time, and he confidently named the animal Bison Alticornis, which literally means bison with high horns. That was that. They put the horns in the bison box and moved on. But then, not even a year later, someone else came across a massive skull poking out of a ravine. This thing was a monster. When it was finally dug up and cleaned, Marsh took one look and probably had one of those wait a minute moments. The skull had three full horns, not just two, and didn't look anything like a bison. Marsh quickly realized his earlier discovery wasn't from a mammal at all. It belonged to this new beast, so he renamed it Triceratops, which means three-horned face. Definitely catchier than Alticornis. Triceratops wasn't one of those gentle, dainty plant eaters that just tiptoed around chewing leaves. It was an absolute unit. Fully grown, this thing could stretch up to 30 feet in length and weigh somewhere between 6 to 12 tons. That's not just big, that's heavier than a T-Rex big. It was shorter. 26 feet long, 10 feet high, weighing 6 tons. Yeah, but wider, bulkier, and closer to the ground, which gave it an edge that most predators couldn't mess with. T-Rex might have been taller and flashier, but Triceratops was built like a fridge on legs. The body structure was no joke either. Its skeleton was packed with thick, heavy bones, especially around the shoulders, hips, and neck. Those areas were like nature's version of reinforced armor. Its back legs are straight like a rhino its front legs. The femur, the upper leg bone, was so thick that if you placed it next to an African elephant's, the dinos would still win the heavyweight round. It had chunky limbs to support all that bulk and a center of gravity that made it nearly impossible to knock over. Basically, it was the prehistoric equivalent of a tank with four legs. But what really made Triceratops scary wasn't just its size. It was how all that mass was weaponized. This dinosaur held its ground against apex predators like T-Rex and sometimes it pushed back hard. If there's one thing Triceratops didn't hold back on, it was the size of its head. A head that weighs 1,000 pounds. This thing had a skull so massive it took up more than a third of its entire body length. That's not a design flaw, that's an intimidation strategy. You're dealing with a dinosaur whose face alone was longer than most humans are tall, and it was built like a battering ram. The most standout part of the skull was the huge frill stretching out behind it. A lot of people assume it was just there to look impressive, like a dinosaur crown, but nope, it had a job to do. When a Triceratops digs in, it's not going anywhere. That frill was made of something called fibrolamellar bone, a special type that could heal fast and regrow quickly when damaged. Basically, it was like built-in battlefield repair. If something bit it, cracked it, or rammed into it, the bone could patch itself up in time for the next round. And considering how rough life was back then, that's a pretty neat trick. Functionally, the frill was like a shield strapped to the back of the head. It protected the neck, which is one of the weakest and most vulnerable spots on any animal. Trying to bite through that thing? Good luck. Predators would have had to get through solid bone before they could land a lethal hit. That's assuming they even dared to try, because just the sight of that armored face coming at you full speed probably made more than a few hungry theropods change their minds. The horns on Triceratops were its most dangerous weapon too. Six times thicker than a human skull. 
And when I say dangerous, I don't mean pointy enough to poke something. I mean long, heavy, deadly weapons sharp enough to turn a fight into a bloodbath. The two brow horns above its eyes could each grow over 3.7 feet in length. That's just the bone part. In real life, they were likely covered in a layer of keratin, the same stuff that makes up your fingernails and rhino horns, making them even longer and sharper. So what we see in fossils, that's the trimmed down version, and Triceratops used these horns so much. Whether it was defending itself from predators like T-Rex or going head-to-head -head with a rival Triceratops, those horns were doing serious damage. Paleontologists have found multiple Triceratops skulls with puncture wounds. Actual holes punch straight through the bone, caused by other horns. That's not something that happens in a play fight, that's battlefield stuff. There's a good chance a lot of those horn fights were between Triceratops themselves, probably over territory or mating rights. It's like prehistoric street brawls. Two massive tank-like creatures locking horns and pushing with everything they had. The strength behind those horns wasn't just in size, but in how they were built into the skull and supported by that thick neck and sturdy body. These weren't jabs, they were full force impalements. And now you might be wondering if Triceratops and T-Rex actually threw down in real life. The answer is yes. The powerful jaws of Tyrannosaurus Rex can bite down with 7,000 pounds of force. And not just maybe they crossed paths, they actually had a fight. Its evidence is the dueling dinosaurs fossil, and it might be the most intense prehistoric crime scene ever found. This fossil isn't just bones lying around in the same area, it's a full on clash frozen in time. A young Tyrannosaurus and a Triceratops locked together in death. But what the fossil shows really flips the script. The T Rex was a mess. Its teeth were shattered like someone had punched its mouth full force, its finger was broken, and its skull was cracked. Meanwhile, the Triceratops, it had one bite mark, just one. That's not exactly what you'd expect if the mighty tyrant king was the one doing the damage. This wasn't some clean kill gone wrong. This looked like Rex picked a fight and got steamrolled. Now, not everyone agrees on the exact story. Some scientists think they died together from something else after the battle. Others say they were just conveniently buried together. But even with the debate, there's one thing nobody can deny, that Rex got wrecked, and the Triceratops, it was holding its own like a boss. No fear, just full force retaliation. T-Rex was a predator, sure, but even predators have blind spots. One fossil, known as Dueling Rex, shows something that makes you rethink who was stalking who. It's a big adult Rex, about 40 feet long, with a clean, round puncture wound in the back of its thigh. That alone is weird, but what's even weirder is how perfectly the wound lines up with the horn of a Triceratops. Same shape, same size, same everything. the angle of the wound, it came from behind and below, which means the Triceratops wasn't standing in front of the Rex for a classic showdown. It likely came in hot from the side or behind, possibly while the Rex was standing up. That's not defense. That's a straight up offense. <laughs> A full speed horn charged to the leg while the predator wasn't even ready. This wasn't just some accidental bump, it was a calculated hit. One that could have knocked the T-Rex off balance, or even crippled it. And considering how massive both these animals were, getting blindsided like that would have been devastating. Especially if the Triceratops followed up. That fossil tells us something most people don't expect from a plant eater. This dinosaur had serious fight back energy. Not just when cornered, but sometimes even when the fight hadn't started yet. It was making the first move rather than waiting to be chased. When the asteroid slammed into Earth and ended the age of dinosaurs, most species vanished pretty fast. But there's a twist. Triceratops might have outlived the T-Rex by a little, not by millions of years or anything dramatic like that. Just a few days, maybe weeks. Still, in a mass extinction, that's enough to say something. There's a reason Triceratops became the most successful plant eater of the Cretaceous. One fossil of a Triceratops was found just above the KPG boundary, the famous geological line that marks when the dinosaurs got wiped out. That means this particular dino was alive after the moment we mark as Extinction Day. So while most creatures were already toast, Triceratops was apparently still out there doing its thing, eating, moving, existing probably very confused. What's even more interesting is that T-Rex fossils haven't been found above that boundary, which means it's possible Triceratops was the last of its kind still walking. The Tyrant King might get more attention, more movies, and more memes, but Triceratops may have been the one to outlast
surpassed them all, the one still standing when the curtain closed on the entire era. Even after a lifetime of brawling, surviving apex predators, and tanking through the late Cretaceous, Triceratops went down swinging. But maybe, just maybe, it went down last. So what's your take? Did Triceratops really have what it takes to bring down the mighty T-Rex, or was it just a lucky shot in a world full of giants? Drop your thoughts in the comments. We want to hear who you think ruled the late Cretaceous.